Today we are going to transform rational functions, which means that today is going to be graphing heavy, so you'll be needing graph paper again. You will also be needing, we'll also be using Desmos. So if you want to follow along with Desmos using your phone or the computer that you are using right now, you can feel free to do so. Okay, so today we will transform rational functions. Our objective today is that students will is that students will graph transformations in the form f of x equals 1 over x to the n. All right, so make sure you get the title and objective of today's lesson copied down. Okay, so I'd like us to start by having everybody go to Desmos. So open up Desmos. I will open it up too. Just need to share my screen here. Okay. So, in Desmos, I would like you to create this function for me. F of x equals 1 divided by x to the power of n. And then it says add slider. And I would like you to create a slider like this. So this slider, we can move it up and down, and we can explore what happens to our graph as we move this up and down. Now let's start by looking what happens when n, our exponent in the denominator, is an odd number. So when it is an odd number, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on.
we get this shape that is rotationally symmetric around the origin. You see that if I take this and if I was to rotate the screen, rotate it 180 degrees, we would get the same shape that we started with. Now let's look what happens when we make, make n even. Well, if it's zero, it's nothing interesting there. But if it's anything else, if it's anything greater than zero, then we get these curves. that are symmetric around the y-axis. So moving back To our notes, given f of x equals 1 over x to the n power, if n is greater than 0, f of x looks like, looks generally like this. This rotational symmetry with these curves in the first and third quadrants if n is odd, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. If n is even, then it looks generally something like this. Two symmetrical curves in the first and second quadrant. Now, all sorts of weirdness can happen if n is not a whole number, you know, if n is 1.2 or something, because of course only whole numbers can be odd or even, but that is beyond the purview of today's lesson. Okay, so we see the general shapes of these graphs depending on if n is even or odd. Now I'm going to have you use your graphing calculators to, or to use Desmos to sketch some graphs. OK, 
Okay, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? So now, using Desmos, I'd like you to sketch the following graphs for me. You know, draw the sketch it out on paper, but use Desmos to help you. I would like you to sketch g of x equals one over x minus two. I would like you to sketch h of x equals negative 1 over x plus 3. And, I would, and finally, k of x equals 2 over x plus 3 minus 5. Sketch each of these for me. I'll give you about, let's say, 3 minutes.
Okay. So let's go ahead and graph each of these with the help of Desmos. So first, we have 1 over x minus 2. OK. So I'll do this one in blue. OK, so I see that we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 2 and a horizontal asymptote on the origin. Probably. There we go. That probably is a bit better. OK, so this graph looks something like this. Now, it looks like 1 over x, but it's been shifted to the right by 2. Now, what about negative 1 over x plus 3? Graph this in Desmos. Well, let's see. Looks like this one has its vertical asymptote on the y-axis, but now it has a horizontal asymptote at a height of 3. It also has been flipped upside down. So it looks like instead of being like in quadrant one, quadrant three, it's more like in, it's in quadrant two, quadrant four. It's been flipped upside down. Now what about the last one here? We have 2 over x plus 3 minus 5. OK, and I'll do this one in red. OK, it's back to the same, to the same usual shape. But this time, we seem to have a horizontal asymptote at 5, or at negative 5, and a vertical asymptote at negative 3. Hmm. But isn't that interesting? This 2, what happens if we make this 2 a 1? Ah, so that actually kind of changes its height. You see that? So that makes it stretch up taller. So anyway, go down by 5. Left by 3. And now we have it. So it's been stretched up taller than the others. Oh, oops, wrong quadrant. Ah, disaster. OK, there we go. So this one has been stretched up taller.
now that we've done all now that we've seen what they look like we should be able to put all of what we've learned together and figure out what each of these numbers represents Okay, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? So, <clears> hmm, <throat> given a function of the form f of x equals a plus b over x minus c. What do each of these letters represent? Well, we saw that the number we're adding on the outside represents a vertical shift, either up 3, in this case, or down 5. So A represents a vertical shift. Up, if A is positive, down, if A is negative. Yeah. We saw that C oops, gave us our horizontal asymptotes. Adding 3 moved us left by 3. Subtracting 2 moved us right by 2. That's the reason why we have an x minus c down here. The horizontal asymptote is at x equals c, which means that c, in general, represents a vertical shift. Now what about B? Well, B represents, oh, needs a lowercase b. B represents a vertical stretch.
also, if B is less than one and greater than zero, so if it's in between zero and one, It is a vertical squish. We'll see that in a minute. A vertical compression. If B is negative, F reflects over the x-axis. Now, one last thing on this particular topic. Now this, we were only messing with one over x. I can move to Desmos for a moment. And then we had f of x equals a plus, ah, equals a plus b over x minus c. OK, add a bunch of sliders. Let's see. <laughs> so just to share screens with Desmos here, we can see that we can move our graph up and down by making a a positive or a negative number. And it will move our graph up or down that amount. C, the number down here, can move our graph right or left, depending on if we make it a positive or negative number. And B, the number up here, can, this is a little bit hard to tell, but it is stretching our function up and down. Let me see, let me make like a vertical line out here that might make it easier to see. Say it like x equals 3. Let's make it x equals 2. OK. So as I make, make b bigger, actually, let's put a x equals 1. As b gets bigger, it moves our graph up or down stretches it up and down. Note that at the value of at a when x is 1, it always stretches our function up far enough so that when x is 1, our y value is whatever b happens to be. OK. The question is, this worked for, you know, 1 over x functions. But we started by also looking at 1 over x squared, you know, ones with even exponents. Let's see if, let's see if our, uh, let's see if it still applies. So let's look at 1 over x squared. Now, I'm actually going to put the parentheses around both of them. There we go. Now, as we can see, changing A moves up and down. Changing C moves us right and left. And changing B stretches up or compresses down. And if it's negative, flips upside down. So yeah, 
So these transformations that we wrote down on our board here apply for any exponent, not just one. If we make it five, same rules apply up, down, ah, left, right, st stretch, compression, or flipping upside down. OK. So back to the board for a moment. So this is true. for any exponent over the denominator, or for any power of the denominator. OK. Now, notably, this makes it really easy to sketch quick graphs. So, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. We're good? No one's... Okay. I thought I heard someone turn on their mic for a moment. Okay. all this horribleness from a previous lesson. So without using Desmos, let's sketch f of x equals 3 plus 1 over x minus 4 squared. So, well, we know that this number here represents a vertical shift. So it's going to shift our whole function up by 3. This minus 4 represents a horizontal shift. It will move our function right by 4. Now, what shape will it have? Well, there's no vertical stretch here. So I don't need to worry about that. But it is a 1 over x squared function, so it'll have curves in these two regions here. So our graph, whoa, should look something about like this. Ah, there we go. And if we check our work with Desmos, Looks good to me. OK. Now, that said, functions are not necessarily required to be in this nice, convenient form. 
sometimes we might have to rewrite them into that form before we can conveniently sketch them. So, let's graph f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 3. using transformations of y equals 1 over x. In other words, we need to rewrite it We need to rewrite it as y equals a plus b over x minus c. So how are we going to do that? Hmm. Hmm, well, oops. We have f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now, it looks like we already have a denominator that we can work with, x minus c, x minus 3. That one's good. Oh, which uh, someone asked to see a graph again. I didn't erase it. I just need to find it again. No. No. Where did I put it? Here it is. This graph, person in private chat? Let me know when you're ready for me to move on. OK, great. OK, so we have this x plus 2 over x minus 3 thing. And I, we need to rewrite it so that it says a number plus b over x minus c. So we need to like split this number off from the rest of this. Now, I could just rewrite it as like x over x minus 3 plus 2 over x minus 3. But that wouldn't really help us because we need, because we don't want any x's aside from this one down here. So here's what we can do. Let's take this 2 and let's rewrite it as negative 3 plus 5. OK, now why on earth would I do that? Because now I can split this into two fractions. x minus 3 over x minus 3 plus 5 over x minus 3. So 
So, do you agree that this equals this and this equals this? Now, anything divided by itself is 1. So we have ourselves 1 plus 5 over x minus 3. And hey, that's something we can graph. We have a vertical shift, horizontal shift, vertical stretch. Hmm. My tummy just rumbled. I'm hungry. I'm ready for lunch. But no, we must get through this lesson first. So let's go ahead and sketch this thing really quick. <sighs> Don't taunt me, Devon. Lunge isn't for another 10 minutes. So, we need to graph this thing. 1 plus 5 over x minus 3. So, we have our vertical shift of 1. a horizontal shift of 3 to the right, because it was x minus 3. I always find the horizontal lines easy to make straight and beautiful, but the vertical lines are harder. I wonder why that is. Something to do with the way arms work, I imagine. Now, it's been stretched up by 5. or vertically by 5. Which means it'll probably look something about like this. I don't care that much about you getting the vertical stretch looking exact. That's kind of hard to make it look good. But I do care a lot about you getting the horizontal and vertical asymptotes right. And let's see, did we graph this thing correctly? Share screen, Desmos. So we started with x plus 2 over x minus 3. Let's see, we should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, and a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Looks great. So we were able to rewrite it into a form that we could transform and then graphed it. OK. Let's try one more. And then I'll send you all off to lunch. And just as important, I'll send me off to lunch. Grumble, grumble, hunger, hunger. Oh, the board with the equation? Yeah, this guy. So we see here the vertical shift here, horizontal shift here, and a vertical stretch here. Let me know when you're ready.
Okay, let's try another one. And there's a lot more we could spend on this topic about rewriting them, but we're not gonna spend too long on this. Okay, let's try another one. This one will actually, this one will look a bit more frightening, but it'll actually be a lot easier. Let's graph f of x equals 2x squared minus 1 over x squared using transformations. Well, once again, we need to have it be written in the form. Our goal is to have it in the form of something that we can graph using transformations. A plus 1 over, or not 1, sorry, B over x minus C. Now, in this case, we have these squared, so it'll look more like this. Now, anyway, we have f of x equals 2x squared minus 1 over x squared. Now, I note that an x squared divided by an x squared would cancel, right? Which would leave me with just a number. But I can't just cancel them right now because, you know, I would need the entire numerator to be multiplied by x squared in order to cancel. But I can split this up into a sum of fractions. 2x squared over x squared minus 1 over x squared. You know, these are, have common denominators, so I could subtract them to get this. So I can also split them up the, going the other way. Well, hey, the x squareds cancel, leaving us with just a 2. 2 minus 1 over x squared. Now, we don't have a minus c. But that's OK, because x is the same as x minus 0, which makes it very clear how we can graph this. Will anyone yell at me if I, if I uh, move to the graphing board? Okay, let me know when you're ready. Okay, so now let's graph this son of a gun. Whoa, okay. So first we have that vertical shift on the outside of two. Our horizontal shift is zero, so our horizontal or sorry, our vertical asymptote is here because we don't have a horizontal shift. Now our function is an x squared, but you see how it's negative, which means that instead of having the two curves up here, the whole thing has been flipped upside down. and it'll look something like this. There we go. Wait, no, <laughs> Mr. LaRue, what did you do? <laughs> I blame hunger, okay. 
the other one is down here. There we go. Yeah, because of the x squared term. There we go. OK. Remember that we saw that when the exponents were odd, they would live in like diagonally opposing quadrants. Here, they're li they're, it has that symmetry across the asymptote. All right. Anyway, that is it for today's lesson. We could go on and look at like increasingly complicated ways of, of equations that we to start with, but no, we're not going to do that. So today we learned we just don't have time. Uh, I would need to do that in another lesson, and we just do not have the time. So today we learned how to how to uh, graph how to graph a rational function using transformations of 1 over x or 1 over x squared. We saw that adding on the outside here represents vertical shifts. Adding on the inside represents horizontal shifts. Multiplying the rule of the function provides a vertical stretch. And we saw that we can flip it upside down if we have, if it's a negative number. So tomorrow, tomorrow is a holiday, Veterans Day. So I will see you guys on Thursday now. And we're done on time for a change. So I'll see you guys on Thursday. There will be a check for understanding this afternoon, of course.